Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ACW newscast. I am Hakeem Johnson, your ACW commentator, as always, and welcome to the final newscast of 2014, number 59. And um, I'm, before we get to anything about this newscast, I do want to apologize for getting this newscast so late. I know it was supposed to be the day after Animania 3 Saturday, but here's what happened, basically. Um, as some of you guys know, I am a pro wrestler, and uh, I locally wrestle here um, in California. I've been doing it for two years now, and um, we had a show on Saturday night. I thought I could do the newscast in the morning, get that done, upload it before I can even get to the show. Obviously, some plans kind of changed, and um, I had to be there earlier than I expected. Ooh, excuse me. So, couldn't do the newscast on Saturday and Sunday. Just kind of, uh, I, had to, I had to go to work early than I expected uh, last night. That, and I was just kind of tired and sore from the show on Saturday. I was just like, eh, I, I just, there's no way I'm going to do a newscast last night either, even though I promised it. So, Monday, today's the day I want to give you guys a newscast, you know. I am officially, I am officially on hiatus, which is good for me. So I'm finally relaxing. I can finally just have free time to do this. Give you something a little bit before we close out 2014 ACW wise. Um, I'm gonna let you guys know right now for this newscast that I'm going to be like in a no f's given mode because I currently have a delicious uh, quart of chow mein that I'm about to eat here, and I'm kind of and I'm watching a. CCL Adrenaline, at least the newest episode. I finally got a chance to watch the newest episode now. Um, shout outs to Eddie Mack, the champ, and all those guys while they're doing CCL. Um, but yeah. So if you guys hear some background noises or if you guys just hear me eating like I'm about to do right now, give me a second. Mm, that's some damn good chow mein. Damn. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, that's the, re that's the reason why. I'm on vacation, so I clearly don't care anymore right now. But I had to do a newscast for you guys because I owe you guys one, and I promise. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, so yeah, um, obviously what we're gonna talk about throughout this newscast is right now the aftermath of um, arguably the biggest uh, mega event of the year for CAW, which is Animania 3. And I've got to be honest with you, I I try not to be cocky or arrogant, but um, the fact that I'm, you know, getting the praises from everybody within the call world, call owners alike, and even call fans, truly makes me happy, truly makes me feel really great, and um, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to everybody that watched Animania 3. Um, if you haven't watched Animania 3, go do so now. You've got three months to go to watch Animania 3. Until we come back, so anytime you want to watch Animania 3, it'll be on VO and on the ACW website until then. Um, so if you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch it. It was a truly great experience. Five hours of just spectacular awesomeness from Anime Championship Wrestling. Um, for those that did watch it, thank you very much, and uh, we will see you next year. And uh, ACW will be back next year. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about Animania 3 and what just transpired from there. We're going to also talk about what I have in store for ACW next year. And, um, I'm going to read some of your questions and comments. Some of them really revolve around ACW and Animania, which I do appreciate. So, again, thank you guys. Um, let's talk about the first match of Animania 3. It was, um, the Impulse Road to Destiny match. It was Dark Magician, Gara, Ryu, and Sagat. Um, it was a fun match. Listen, I like doing Road to Destiny matches because I know they're a bit random at times, but it was fine for what it was. As you all know, Kankuro gored the hell out of his brother Gara and dragged him to the back, so we don't know the whereabouts of that. And ultimately, Dark Magician was the one that won the match. And now he is the Impulse Road to Destiny champion. And um, I gotta tell you, it's, it, 2014 has been Dark Magician's year. Which, if there was anyone that you can call a breakout star of the year, it would be Dark Magician. And in terms of breakout star of the year, I will be talking about something like that later in this tele newscast. But, yeah, Dark Magician's had a great year. He's debuted, made a strong debut. He's been undefeated since in ACW. And now he's the Impulse Road to Destiny champion. That means he can change the Impulse title scene between now and Animania 4 next year. 
So it's going to be interesting to see how Dark Magician kind of implements himself um, into the title picture, or if he's just going to wait in and trade it in normally. Um, it's his call, really. You know, again, people got on Zuko for some of the same things, but at the end of the day, you got to realize if you have an opportunity in front of you, you have to take it. That's why I didn't get mad at. That's why I understood why Zuko did it last, this year. I understood why he did the trade in this year. It's just the way that he carried the title afterwards is what I had a problem with. So, so Dark Magician is your new Impulse Road Destiny champion. Now the second match, second match of the card, you got the uh, XL Tag Team Titles on the line in a three-team turmoil match. It was the Little Fighters, Street Fighters, and Team Guy. Little Fighters and Street Fighters had their match continuing off from their match from uh, Anime Revolution last month. The Street Fighters caught the Little Fighters slipping once again, and they remained in the turmoil match. But the Street Fighters were already fatigued. They were already fatigued. So this was a prime opportunity for Team Guy to come in as the fresher team and take advantage, in which they obviously did. And ultimately, Brock Lee and Neji Ayuga, for the first time in their careers, it's weird because Team Guy has been a team... For almost seven years now, and this is their first time becoming Excel Tag Team Champions. It's really, truly crazy if you think about it. But uh, Rockley and Team Guy um, has really had a great year as well. As you all know, he was Intercontinental Champion for at least two weeks. But he was Intercontinental Champion. He did what no one thought he could do and beat Sasuke for the title. And now he's a champion once again, Excel Tag Team Champions, with his partner Neji Ayuga, who, wants, who wins his first title along with that. So, um... Yeah, I mean, it's a really good. I mean, it's a really good thing for Team Guy. Who knows how that's gonna happen? How it's gonna turn up? Um, if Team Guy's gonna be the new standard of the uh, um, XL Tag Team Title Division, who knows? But uh, we'll find out next year, right? Um, third match: it's the Joe Higashi Open Invitational match. And I know I just switched those two matches. I don't really care. Again, no else given right now. But Third match was the uh, Cruiserweight Open Invitational match. Joe Agashi defending the Cruiserweight title against anybody willing to challenge him outside of ACW. Now, there were names floating around prior to the show. Who was it going to be? Who was going to take up Joe Agashi's challenge? Nobody really knew. And certainly I didn't when we found out ultimately who accepted the challenge. At first, nobody came out. But then Joe Agashi was about to leave. And then all of a sudden, the Attack on Titan theme plays. And I was confused, because I'm like, this can't really be what I think it is. And then when Aaron Yeager comes out from the stage, I just was surprised. Like, Aaron Yeager, of all people, was the one to accept the challenge. And not only accept the challenge, not only put on a stellar performance against Joe Agashi, but ultimately submit Joe Agashi to become the new Cruiserweight Champion. If that isn't a phenomenal debut, I don't know what is. And now... We are now in the post-Joe Agashi era of the Cruiserweight division. So now Aaron Yeager is the champion. How will Joe Agashi respond? How will Aaron Yeager carry the, the torch? And let's be quite honest. Let's ask this question too. It's nice that Aaron Yeager made a surprising appearance. He, he kept up with Joe Agashi. He won the Cruiserweight title. That's fine and good. But as much as you didn't like or maybe even liked Joe Agashi, it cannot be denied that he carried the Cruiserweight division on his shoulders. This man was a dominant champion. He really was. So even though Aaron's going to try to make his own lane, eventually he's going to have to be compared with other previous champions. Joe Agashi will clearly be one of them. Can Aaron Yeager have a title reign that can somewhat be equal or even better than Joe Agashi's? That is another question that's going to have to be answered in due time. So we don't know that really until then, but we'll see. And then the fourth match was a match that a lot of people were looking forward to. A lot of people have been waiting to see in ACW, and you finally got it. The Glamour X division officially began here in Animania 3 in our four-way elimination Glamour X match to crown our first ever Glamour X champion. Um, it was Asuka Kazama, Ino Yamanaka, Reiko Hinomoto, and Kami. Now, Asuka Kazama was the first one eliminated by Ino with her standing slice, slice bread, so that delves down to three. Reiko went for a Hurakurana roll-up, and we thought Kami was eliminated, but Kami, with her intelligence and wit, was able to counter it and have Reiko trapped for the three count. So Reiko was gone next. And then when Ino and Kami battled it out, 
Cameron went for a move from the top rope, missed it onto Eno. Eno made the standing slice bread. That was all fine and good, but then Eno puts her feet on top of the ropes to make sure she secured the victory. And either the referee is blind or stupid. It could be both, because these referees are pretty stupid. So, Eno, through cheap fashions, is now your first ever and current Glamour X champion. And there will be a target behind her back, because you know, as everyone knows, you'll have Cami chasing, you'll have Reiko chasing, you'll have Asuka chasing. You now also have Samus chasing you as well, since Samus is now the new addition to the Glamour X division, another veteran in the call world. So, Ino Yamanaka needs to not be too cocky thinking that she's going to hold that forever, because if she slips up, if she slips up one time, she can lose that title as soon as she won it. But nonetheless, Ino's the first ever Glamour X champion, and nobody can take that away from her throughout her entire career in ACW, and in call in general. Then the next match was for the Impulse Championship, Trunks defending the title against the 2014 Impulse Rumble winner Broly, being accompanied by Trunks' mother, Bulma, after weeks building up to Bulma turning on the fans, turning on Trunks even, by trying to align herself with the same regime, and align herself with Broly so that way Broly can take back the title of Trunks. Now, Broly and Trunks are one apiece, if you recall, at Anime Revolution 2008, Broly defeated Trunks so bad that Trunks had to be out of action for a while with ACW. And then afterwards, that, when he came back in 2012, he fought Broly and defeated him at Fusion of that year. So now they're one apiece. Only this time, the same regime is involved. This time, the title's on the line. A lot of big things happening. So... Both men went back and forth. Both men put themselves through hell. Broly was at his absolute best, and so was Trunks. Bobo tried to interfere a couple of times, and it worked. Sometimes it didn't work. At the end of the day, though, Trunks was able to hit three T-drivers, including one that came off the top rope that, that, that defeated Gohan for him to win the Impulse title in the first place. Nonetheless, Trunks retains his Impulse title against Broly, and for now, the same regime can't control the Impulse title the way they wanted to. So that was good. That was that was pretty serviceable. Next match you had um, the Straw Hat Crew going to challenge the uh, Impulse Tag Team Champions, Ash Ketchum and Brock Anime 4 Kids, for the Impulse Tag Team titles. Now, again, this is interesting because these two teams have been going back and forth ever since Anime 4 Kids arrived in ACW and beat the Straw Hat Crew of their first encounter to the point where they left temporarily. So the Straw Hat Crew had to really prove that they are still the centerpiece of the Impulse Tag Team division and prove that they can redeem themselves from that first encounter. And they ultimately did. Gary Oak tried interfering in this match, but Usopp, who made a surprise appearance and was a surprise six-man in that uh, six-man tag match at Anime Revolution, made a surprise appearance and stopped Gary Oak from interfering. And that was all the Straw Hat crew needed so they can focus on Ash and Brock. And ultimately, the Straw Hat crew win, and now they are two-time Impulse Tag Team Champions, Luffy and Zoro, and they have proven that they are still the centerpiece of the Impulse Tag Team division. Mm. This Chame is good, yo, guys. I'm telling you right now. If I fall asleep, it's going to be because of the Chame. But, um, anyways, the next match was a match that is very personal, a match that has been brewing for quite some time, and it finally reached this boiling point. Leading into this match here tonight, or that night, as it was Sasuke Uchiha versus Maroku the Monk, one on one for the Intercontinental Title. And as much as the Intercontinental Title has been important and prestigious for all the things that has gone through this year, and this, as much as the Intercontinental Title was on the line here at stake, it was much more than that. It was about Maroku the Monk trying to preserve his legacy in ACW and trying to make sure that he's not, you know, surpassed. By someone like a Sasuke. And for Sasuke, it's him trying to build his own future. To build his own lane that maybe Gamma and Moroko have been trying to suppress for all these years when he was a part of Gamma. So it was a legacy versus legacy match. It was going to determine where they go from here. Both men's careers was going to be changed by this match. And it ultimately did in my opinion. Moroku and the Monk and Sasuke Uchiha went at it. This was Sasuke Uchiha's greatest match. And not in terms of opinion or five star classic. In terms of the challenge ahead that he had. This was his greatest challenge yet, because you are facing former XL champion. 
Um, you are facing a guy that is a main event caliber star in Morocco the Monk. No matter how cocky and arrogant he is, that's who he is. Um, and Morocco the Monk, uh, you know, Sasuke wasn't easy either. You know, Sasuke delivered three CKOs in this match. And the Little Fighters tried to interfere in this match, and Sasuke took them out with a splash over the top rope, which is awesome. Moroka the Monk gave Sasuke a hell of a fight. Sasuke did the same thing as well. Both men were bleeding from the um, effect. It took Moroka the Monk to miss the monk's, uh, the people, the peasant's elbow, excuse me. It took Moroka the Monk to miss the peasant's elbow for Sasuke to nail one final CKO to finally nail in that match, and Sasuke retains the Intercontinental title. Now, what does this mean for Sasuke now that he's no longer a part of, um, he's no longer a part of, you know, Gamma, now he's going to assumingly be on his own. So what does that mean for him? Because a lot of people have regarded Sasuke as the future of ACW in terms of him being the spot he was in, and it's time for him to step up to the plate and do something about it. So, I don't know. Has he surpassed? Has he surpassed uh, Moroku? Who knows? Only time will tell. But I do believe good things are coming for, um, I do think, I do think big things are coming for, um, uh, Sasuke. And what does this mean for Moroku and Gamma? I mean, let's face it, the Little Fighters lost at Animania 3, they couldn't get back the XL Tag Team titles. Moroku the Monk just got defeated by Sasuke, couldn't even bring the Intercontinental title back to Gamma. So Gamma's titleless, and I haven't said that in a while. Because for a while, Gamma was the championship showcase of ACW. They had all the belts in Excel for a short time. But now, they have nothing. And all three members of Gamma lost at Animania 3. So what does the future of Gamma hold for all three individuals? Again, we will have to find out next year, I guess. But there you have that. The next match in the card was the Excel... Road to Destiny match. Now, you had the Impulse Road to Destiny match earlier opening the show. Now, could the XL side top it? Now, I want to ask you guys. Do you guys think, which was the better Road to Destiny match? Let's be honest here. In your opinion, in your opinion and why, which Road to Destiny match was better at Animania 3? Was it the Impulse Road to Destiny match that was won by Dark Magician? Or was it this XL Road to Destiny match? I see that a lot of people are confused as to which one. Because I guess people think it was that good. But honestly, I really want to know, though. I really want to know. What did you think was the better Road to Destiny match? You can comment down below or however you want to comment. But I really want to know. I'm curious. But it, confu it um, the XL Road to Destiny match um, included Haru Glory, Akuma, Kaniki Man, and Hiei. Still a match just as brutal as the Impulse Road to Destiny match. Um, at the end of the day, um, Akuma in the right spot in the right place. Grab the briefcase down. Akuma is your Excel Road to Destiny champion. And so Akuma, a guy that in his opinion has been muffled and depressed and um, oppressed and misrepresented in his own words and his own thoughts by ACW and ACW management. Now is the Excel Road to Destiny match. And now he can change the Excel title scene however he wants to. He did it once here this year. Akuma did it once this year. By making Haru Glory lose the title to Zuko, he can do it again next year. But this time it would be him champion, possibly. Who knows? But Akuma's future heading into 2015 looks pretty bright. I just hope Akuma doesn't have to bitch anymore about the fact that we kept him down. We never kept Akuma down. Maybe Akuma needs to look at himself in the mirror as he's now the XL Road Destiny Champion and realize that maybe it was you that kept yourself down and you just stepped it up and notch your Animania 3 to finally win the XL Road to Destiny Championship briefcase. Maybe you should think about that. If that's just in my opinion. Well, then the next match. And I gotta tell you something. I just gotta tell you something to give you insight. I loved recording and doing this match. Because as much as you guys have been looking forward to it for six years, I was looking forward to it as terms of how I wanted the story to be told. Here's the thing. I think you guys know this by now with ACW and myself. I like to implement stories and psychology with my matches. Because I think that's important. Because I think, you know, it makes a match unique in their own way. I mean, I know it's a video game. You can't always have a video game emulate the real-life aspects of pro wrestling. That's just not going to be possible. I understand that. 
But that doesn't mean you can't try or can't attempt to make that some sort of version of reality. And with me, as I've matured over the years as a car owner with ACW, from just smashing buttons to make smooths look cool and to actually slowing down and letting the characters tell the story that they need to tell so the fans and the people watching it can really take in what is going on in that match. That says a lot more than just seeing a thousand moves that look cool and give you a holy shit move moment. And this match here represents why Anime Championship Wrestling is Anime Championship Wrestling. Naruto Uzumaki versus Gohan in a last man standing match. This was six years in the making. We haven't seen Naruto Uzumaki since Animania 2 up until this point. The last time Naruto Uzumaki was seen at Animania 2, he was getting beat down and betrayed by his former best friend of Degeneration X, Gohan, and became Impulse Champion. So this match had a lot of personal animosity between these two, and for right, rightfully so. This was Naruto's first match back since Animania 2, even. Um, and he didn't lose a beat. The match started off just explosive. Gohan couldn't even come into the ring. Naruto jumped over the ropes and attacked Gohan. Because how important this is. This is about two best friends. Formal, it's formal, former allies, former friends. Turned into bitter enemies. Turned into explicit rivals. And you saw that in this match. The fact that they were willing to go through these lengths in this match. To see one of them be officially destroyed. To be one of them... No longer able to wrestle again in ACW. You saw that in this match. Tables flying everywhere. Ladders being hit. Chairs being used. Just steel steps. The whole nine. You can imagine. You, it was all there for you. But that last moment of Naruto Uzumaki taking Gohan and nailing a code breaker off the ladder through the table. That just pretty much put the cherry on the top of this match. And Naruto Uzumaki, in his first match back in six years, defeats Gohan and to become the last man standing. Now, I've been reading the reviews of Animania 3, and a lot of people regard this match, or the other match I'll get to in a minute, as the match of the night. That that match, or that other match, stole the show. And I can't really disagree. Because I was watching Animania 3, for the most part, while you guys were actually watching Animania 3 for the first time. And I didn't realize how truly magnificent I made that Go Naruto go on match really look. Like if I was an if I was an anime fan or an ACW fan, what have you, um, if I saw a match like that, I'd be like, this is fucking awesome. This this is a call wrestling match. This is what call should be about. I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but in, in essence, this is what call wrestling should be. To just trap and engage the crowd into what that match is about. And what the ramifications are going to be with that match going forward. So Naruto wins. So Gohan was not able to defeat his partner Naruto. Now, I'm not going to say that, you know, there was a weak league in DX. Because as much as I despise Gohan, and I have every right to despise Gohan for what he did this year. I cannot deny the fact that he is a talented individual. And that's what hurts so much. That's why Animania 2, the way it ended, hurts so much. Because Gohan was so talented that he took the easy way out and betrayed his own partner Naruto to get what he wanted, which he ultimately did. But for Naruto, who had to suffer through months of injuries and go through rehab and rehabilitation, for him to come back like he didn't miss a step and just defeat Gohan and win that match... You know, the story almost in a way reminds me of Shawn Michaels versus Triple H in their unsanctioned match at SummerSlam 2002, which is, by the way, one of my favorite SummerSlam matches of all time. Triple H versus Shawn Michaels in an unsanctioned match. That was fucking awesome. If you haven't watched that match, as a matter of fact, I'm going to watch that match this week because that match is so awesome. If you have not watched that match, make sure you do it as soon as possible. That match was just beautiful. Shawn Michaels was injured ever since he got his back injured. From WrestleMania 15. No. 14. Apologies. 14. And he's making his comeback about over. Um, uh, about. Five to six years back. And he didn't miss a step. 
he went through hell and back with Triple H until he got the victory and defeated Triple H. That's what Naruto and Gohan to me remember, uh, represents to me. And that's why I probably, in my opinion, that was my favorite match from Animania 3. Naruto and Gohan because the story, the build up, the hype, the talents in the ring, the match itself, and then the ending. It was just all a beautiful wrap up to what it was. So Naruto wins this match. I don't know what this means for Naruto going forward. I don't even know what this means for Gohan moving forward, especially how Animania 3 ended. But again, only time will tell. We shall see and find out um, next year. So then the next match you had Edward Elric versus Mugen one on one for the television title. Now this is funny because Edward Elric defeated Mugen in that fatal four way match uh, to become the two time television champion. And Edward Elric, in the first few seconds of that match, was bragging to Mugen that he can't beat him. First few seconds, bam! Mugen, Kendo. We thought it was over. One, two, kick out. We thought that was going to be the shortest uh, match in Animania history. But both men went back and forth. Both men put a good contest. Mugen, as much as he tried. Edward Elric, you guys got to understand something. Edward Elric is another person that his cockiness gets him to a lot of trouble. But he is so smart and so talented in the ring. And as much as Mugen tried to fight, as much as Mugen tried to make sure that he was going to be a two-time um, Excel Road to Destiny, Ch I mean, sorry, Excel Road to Destiny, television champion. You see what I, see, no F's given. But anyways, he was trying to be a two-time television champion. Edward Elric was just too much for him, I guess. And then Edward Elric was able to defeat um, Mugen and retain the television title. So, again, Edward Elric having another Animania moment. You know, Animania 1, he was the first ever Road to Destiny champion. Animania 2, he main evented for the Impulse Championship. Now, Animania 3, he retains the television champion. You know, there's a lot of people that say that there's a re Mr. WrestleMania. You can argue that, whether that's The Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Hulk Hogan, what have you. But if you want to talk about who's Mr. Animania, if there's somebody in the running... Edward Elric could be that dude. Edward Elric could be that guy, if you really want to be honest. So, I don't know. Edward Elric, another good victory for him. Um, really good victory. Um, again, Edward Elric is going to try to hold that title for as long as he can. Um, we shall see. Uh, we shall see how that goes moving forward. So, then the next match... Which has had a lot of hype and is a full circle type of feel as the XL champion Zuko defended the title against the XL Rumble winner of this year, Aang. And um, both men are arch rivals, as everybody knows from their days, you know, before ACW. Everybody knows that. Um, yeah, but both men went back and forth. Aang came out there and really showed why. He is the Avatar, and Zuko showed why he's the Blue Spirit as well. Let's not sleep on Zuko here for a minute, folks. Both men put out an outstanding match between the two. And Zuko, heading into this match, had retained the title in various ways that would look that he got lucky. But it would not happen here tonight. The eight-year-long journey of the Avatar was realized on that night as Aang, for the first time in his career, won his first ever championship, and it was the big one. Aang is the new XL champion. And that is also what Animania is about. The fact that you can dream and strive for something, and it's going to take a lot of losses, and it's going to take a lot of failures at first. But when you get there, you're a whole different person. And Aang, to win it in the way he did it, by putting on Zuko's own vice of fire onto himself. Couldn't have any, any more of a perfect ending than that. So Aang is a new champion. But what does that mean, essentially? Because Zuko's going to try to ask for a rematch clause. You know how Zuko is. Akuma is now the Excel Road Destiny champion. So he might have his running in there. And then you have the likes of Haru, Hiei, and Kanikiman lurking around as top contenders. So as much as Aang wants to celebrate that title win, he's going to have to realize very soon and very quickly that he's going to have to fight to keep it. The hardest part is not winning the title. It's retaining it. 
And any champion would and any champion at any wrestling promotion would tell you that. So there you have it. And then the final match. You want to talk about epicness. You want to talk about a rivalry that defines not only just both of these both of these guys, but anime in general. Arguably the greatest rivalry in anime history. Arguably. And honestly, if someone made the argument that this is the greatest rivalry of all time in anime, I really couldn't disagree. But, yeah. Wow. Holy shit, this match was. Goku versus Vegeta. Legend versus Legend. The loser leads ACW forever. Yeah. That's all I can really say. Just being speechless about it. And you can just have that big fight feel. There's a lot of matches in wrestling that you can just feel something so epic. You know, Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant at WrestleMania 3. Hulk Hogan versus Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 6. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock at WrestleMania 17. You know, stuff like that. You know, you feel those moments. And they stick with you at a WrestleMania. This is one of them. I remember that a lot of people, you know, back when ACW was just a young company, around 2007, 2008, people wanted to see Goku and Vegeta back then, too. And despite all the times that I tried to do that, you know, we had hiat hiatuses in here and there and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, we finally got it, and what a match. These two went at it, destroyed everything. Everything. They were trying to bring down Madison Square Garden to rubble, these two. And then both men, during the match, transformed into Super Saiyan. Then it really picked up. But then we were one up once again. Then Vegeta would power up and become Majin Vegeta. And Vegeta was just wailing on Goku at that point. And then Goku, in a final stretch, as a final ploy to still stick alive and fight the good fight, transformed into Super Saiyan God. Super Saiyan God that Goku turned into. And it was enough to defeat Vegeta and, be, and win the match and keep his job as Impulse General Manager while Vegeta is no longer employed with ACW. Wow. If I recall, somebody called the match, if I recall, they called it an anime episode entrapped into a wrestling ring. And that is the perfect way to put it. Because editing, editing that match was very tiring. As you can tell with some of the uh, miscues here and there with the match. At least production wise. It was kind of a bit uh, tiring to do. But I had to do it that way. With Goku versus Vegeta I had to do that match that way. Because there was no other way that match could go. It couldn't be a straight match. It couldn't even necessarily be a hardcore match. You had to add a little bit extra flair production wise. And that's what I did. Um... Yeah, this was also being called the match of the night. These two stole the show as well. For me, listening to um, the anime wrestling fans and the ACW fans, anime fans, what have you, it's either Naruto and Go Gohan or Goku and Vegeta that was the match of the night for them, for the majority. And again, I can't disagree because those two matches were epic in their own way. But nonetheless, the Saiyan regime presumably dies, or died at Edomania 3. So let's think about it. Broly did not win the Impulse title back to the regime. Gohan was not the last man standing, could not defeat Naruto. And now Vegeta couldn't defeat Goku again, and this time Vegeta's leaving ACW for good. Ultimately, the same regime failed. The same regime lost. And in essence, the same regime is pretty much done, I, I would assume. But we'll have to find out next year, but... What a match. What a match. Goku and Vegeta really stole the show. It was just really obvious. Um, well, not obvious to I me. Mean, there's other Naruto Gohan fans saying that no, Naruto and Gohan stole the show. I hope there doesn't become no, like, fan base war between the Naruto Gohan match of the night fans and Goku and Vegeta match of the night fans. But honestly, both matches were really epic, obviously. I mean, I did it, so. It was really great. So, Animania 3 overall, I'm going to be honest with you, it was my favorite ACW mega event that I've ever done in ACW. 
and that includes Animania 2. Everybody knows that Animania 2 was the golden standard for what a mega event should be with ACW. I think Animania 3 has surpassed that greatly. I think Animania 3 has done more than Animania 2, in my opinion. I had fun recording it. I had fun doing the matches. I had fun editing it. I had fun doing commentary for it. I just had fun overall doing Animania 3. Was it tiring? Yes. Was I kind of procrastinating at times with it? Yes, I was. But ultimately, I had fun doing it. And that's what Carl needs to remember. Have fun doing what you love to do. The second it stops being fun is the second you stop doing it. And Animania 3 was just a reminder as to why I do ACW. Animania 3 reminded me why I love CAW, why I've been doing this for about eight years now, and why I'm going to continue to do it for as long as I can or for as long as I want to. Because the fans enjoy it, people enjoy it, it helps them, it entertains them, it engages them, and it does the same to me. And that's just the, that's just the great thing about it. Animania 3 was just perfect. Animania 3, like, Animania 3 really felt like you were watching anime's version of WrestleMania. That's how I, you know, put it, putting together the whole show and watching it now post-production, it really felt like anime's version of WrestleMania. I mean, obviously Animania, but still. Felt like, you know, you were watching a, the way a WrestleMania would go in the anime world, essentially. So... I had fun doing it. Again, thank you guys for watching Animania 3. You guys can watch it over and over and over again. And for those that haven't watched it yet, make sure you guys do it as soon as, po as possible. You guys have three months until we come back for you guys to watch Animania 3. Um, really good show. Very, very good show. Hell, phenomenal show, let's be honest. So, that was the Animania 3 recap. But that shouldn't stop you from still watching Animania 3. So, thank you guys kindly. Um, now, I'm going to eat some chow mein real quick. Mmm! I'm going to tell you guys right now, I am a chow mein fiend. Like, if I ever see someone give me chow mein, not only will I take it, but I will not share. Because I'm greedy like that. Too so greedy. And I am not shameful for it. Um, anyways. Alright. So, we're going to get to your questions and comments that you guys sent me on the Aftermath of Animania 3. I will get to it right now. So, it started. Give me a second. I gotta do a little big cough. <coughs> ah. As you guys can tell, my voice is kind of uh, groggy and I'm losing my voice because it's because, you know, I d did the show on Saturday, but also because from Animated 3 still. So, just my voice is all shot up at this point. Ah. Can I drink some water? I'm telling you right now, water is the best. Like drink in the world. That's my opinion, but that's for another day. Um, let's see, Gary Connell Jr. asked me a couple of questions here. Um, question number one: Are you gonna do more color variants and attires for the ACW Superstars in the future? I'm glad somebody kind of noticed that, even though it was kind of obvious. But you know, obviously it was Animania Three, so we had to change some attires and um, some color variants and just some appearances in general for certain superstars. But um. Yes, I will start doing um, more color variants for certain superstars because I feel like, you know, again, if we want to be realistic or make it as realistic as possible, you know, at least certain superstars should have different attire. You know what I mean? So I did that for animated three purposes to make it really special. But yes, I will be doing more of that in the future. So don't worry about that. Um, question number two, what was your favorite match from Animania three? Um, like I stated just earlier, my my personal favorite match, and everybody has their own opinion, but my personal favorite match, Animania 3, just by doing it, recording it, putting it together, just watching it afterwards, was Naruto versus Gohan in their last man standing match. That was just my favorite match in general because of what I did with it, the story that it told, the build up with it, the match itself, the Naruto and Gohan themselves, the ending after all. Just it was just it was perfect. It was just oh man. That is my favorite match. I'll put it that way. That's my favorite match from Animania 3. Question number 3. Do you think Animania 4 will top Animania 3? Maybe. Possibly. I mean, my goal... I don't try to be different just for the sake of being different. I just do it because that's just... I'm creative. I like to do new things. I like to step outside of the box once in a while. So, the new things you saw with Animania 3 that you probably didn't see at Animania 2, 
It'll apply maybe with Animania 4 that you didn't see with Animania 3. Only time will tell, but will Animania 4 top Animania 3? It's very possible. Don't count it out. Let's see, question number four. Since Christmas is next week, what is your favorite Christmas memory? Hmm. Well, first of all, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm so, t I'm so done with Christmas already because I was already getting tired of it the first week of November. Like I didn't, I didn't even digest my Thanksgiving dinner before I started hearing jingle bells and Rudolph the Red Nose, Re Red Nose Reindeer, and all that stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of done with the holiday season. I just kind of wanted to be over so we can get to 2015. But my favorite Christmas memories, um, obviously, watching some of the cartoons during the Christmas season, um, the, a Charlie Brown Christmas freaking classic, um, some of the Rankin films like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, The Nutcracker, um, you know, going to my uncle's house to celebrate with their family for Christmas was also fun, um, my, um, I remember when I was a kid, we had a, we had the, uh, we had the, uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks Christmas album, and we would play that during Christmas week. And um, as corny as that was, even though I even even when I thought that was corny back then, it was just something that you know the family was together. You know the family was you know we had a Christmas tree, the lights outside, us watching the parade and all that stuff. Those are the type of Christmas memories that I like, and I that I remember, that I'm gonna pass down to my children, and teach them. You know, because honestly, you know, again we're not gonna get religious here. Um, I'm gonna toss that out to the side. I'm not talking about that aspect, but. With Christmas, it's really not about the presents. It's really not about you know the trees and the you know Christmas specials. It's just about that one day where the family can just come together and kind of just reminisce what this year has done for them and what next year has in store for them. That's what Christmas has been to me. And um, hopefully, all of you guys have a very happy holidays. Have a Merry Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Yom Kippur, however you want to celebrate this holiday season, but, um, hope you guys are safe, hope you guys, uh, hug your loved ones, I hope you guys are able to spend time with your loved ones, and just appreciate and tell them how much you appreciate them for what they've been for you, um, for that, throughout this year and throughout the rest of your life, and, um, hopefully we can all just go into 2015 all happy and all jolly. Um, let's see. Final question. What are your thoughts on 2014 in general? P.S. Thank you for providing us great entertainment that is called Anime Championship Wrestling for all these years. You deserve this break, bro. So from the words of Tom from Toonami, stay gold. Thank you very much. Uh, I, 2014 probably is one of my favorite years with Anime Championship Wrestling, personally, because we actually were consistent with Anime Championship Wrestling. We didn't even take that much hiatus. The only hiatus that we took was when Apocalypse got kind of messed up, and it took me two weeks off. So I had to push everything back two weeks. But other than that, we actually really did ACW consistently. But my thoughts on 2014 in general, I put it this way. For me personally, it wasn't as bad as last year. Because 2013, for me personally, was a horrible year. Just a lot of things I was going through, Just it was just horrible for me personally. But 2014, I wouldn't say it was the greatest, but it was decent. You know, work's still working. Trying to go to school, you know, wrestling, um, meeting new people that can help me with a lot of things. ACW returned. Um, yeah, stuff like that. So, you know, 2014 in general for me, it was okay. It was okay, but I'm clearly wait. I'm clearly ready for 2015 at this point. Um, Connor Whit, um, Connor Whitty, Whittle. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but. Will Sasuke ever encounter Naruto in ACW? Never say never, Connor. Never say never. But I believe if Goku and Vegeta was the encounter everyone was waiting for, I'm certain that people are waiting for um, uh, Naruto and Sasuke, I guess, at some point. But I am not spoiling anything. You'll just have to find out next year if that'll ever happen. Um, Let's see. Vinny Christione. VPAC, my man from YouTube. I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, if you guys are not following VPAC on YouTube, man, you guys are just not living life correctly, man. Go follow VPAC. He makes some of the best uh, promo videos for certain colleagues, such as for myself, SCAW, other colleagues. Make sure you guys follow him. 
and he's really great at what he does. Make sure you give him a shout out, a like, a follow, subscribe, whatever. But he asked me a couple questions as well. Uh, number one, was that Shao Kahn doing the ring announcing <laughs> at Mania 3? Yeah, that, I understand. Yeah, no, that wasn't him. I don't know who it was. I don't know who did the announcing at Animated 3. I, the world may never know. I, wink, wink, I don't know who did the announcing last night. Uh, you know, at Animated 3, I don't know. He had, a deep, he had a deep voice, though. Sound like some Mortal Kombat stuff, but, you know, don't know who did it. <laughs> but, um, number two. Out of the three Titan Trons I made, which one did you like the most? Personally, I like the Sasuke one the best. The Sasuke one, just the slow build from the intro, and then when it just hit the climax, it just put everything together of what Sasuke is. I like that Titan Tron just for that reason alone. Uh, number three, what are the odds of seeing both my Shiranu from Fatal Fury and Rizo from Ninja Assassin ever showing up in ACW? It's possible. Ever, like I said, never say never. And with the Glamrex division just starting, people are wondering, well, who else is going to join the division? You can't possibly have four uh, females in your division. Obviously not. It's obviously going to grow and continue to grow next year. I mean, you, I mean, obviously Samus um, is the newest addition to the Glamrex division. That's a veteran in the call world, so that's going to add more prestige to ACW. So it's going to grow. You know, just give it time. Um, but again, never say never with those names. I have a lot of ideas that. Um, you'll see next year. I'll put it that way. Um, number four, is it highly likely to see Voltron get inducted into the ACW Hall of Fame? Very possible, yes. It was, you know, the enemies like Voltron and Gigantor and um, Speed Racer and Astro Boy, people need to understand that those are the enemies. Those are the enemies that laid down the foundation to, for anime to be what it is today, at least in the Western world. Those animes in the 60s, you know, in the 60s and 70s, really encapsulated the Western world, at least the American audience, to be familiar with anime. And then you had the 80s with, you know, um, Fist of the North Star and Akira. You had those types as well. So you got to understand and put into this perspective why those people mean a lot in the anime spectrum. And that's why Speed Racer, not only the fact that he's one of my favorite, you know, characters in anime and one of my favorite shows ever, Speed Racer, but... Speed Racer really was a popular uh, franchise in the 60s. People really don't uh, remember that. So, obviously, him being inducted into the Hall of Fame was well-deserved. And Voltron, he'll probably get in there as well. Um, yes, we will be do yes, we will be doing the ACW Hall of Fame next year. Um, this year was just to induct the 2008 class. So, that means next year there will be... A th so, that means next year there will be an actual 2015 Hall of Fame class. And uh, I will not spoil anything. And yes, I do have my people that I'm going to be inducting. And it might be even more than four next year. I'll put it that way. Um, number five. Have you ever seen the web series Death Battle, Superpower Beatdown, or Epic Rap Battles in history? Have you seen any of them? What are your favorite episodes? Uh, don't really watch Death Battle. Don't really watch Superpower Beatdown. I've seen Epic Rap Battles of history. Um, i trying to think of one of my favorites here. What was the one? Was it? Was there one with the Steve Jobs and uh, Bill Gates? That one was pretty cool. Um, let me see. What was another one? What was the other one? Damn. Um, the reason why I'm, it's taking me a while because I haven't watched any of the recent ones because I think they're starting to run out of material, getting a little corny with their uh, approach. Because I don't mind hip hop being used in a way that is comedic, but I don't like it when people go like, yo, yo, yo. Like try to, you know, dilute it as if hip hop's a joke, because it's not. But I think, I think, was it George Washington, Abraham Lincoln? That's probably another one. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would have to go back and find out. There were some episodes that I did like. I just can't think of it right now. Quick pace. So apologies. But yeah, I do watch, I do, well, at least I did watch Epic Rap Battles in history. Let's see. Garak Weevil, who's trying to start his own uh, league, call league, Battle X. Make sure you guys check it out when it comes out next year. Um, he asked me a couple of questions. Um, number one, assuming that Gohan is still a heel, why did his new attire suggest a face turn? I don't know, did it? You gotta understand, though. Gohan did a lot of unforgivable things at Animania 2, and then he did a lot of un unforgivable things at anim um, this year at Anime Championship Wrestling. That him getting a f That him going for a face turn, him turning face is going to be so forced, in my opinion. 
Not saying that it won't happen, but you gotta really put into perspective. Go on was a real piece of shit this year. Let's be honest. And for him to just you know do a, a sudden face turn because of his attire wouldn't make sense. And I probably that was just his attire because uh, it was Animania three basically. Um, number two, now that the regime saga is officially over, what kind of things should we expect from two twenty? Uh, uh, God, I need to go to sleep after this. But um, after the regime saga is officially over, what kind of things should we expect from twenty fifteen? Um, well, without spoiling anybody, um, expect a lot of social media. We're going to start implementing social media from you guys so we can be more interactive. Um, maybe more programming. I don't know. I'm still kind of iffy on that. It's just expect a lot of, um, interesting things. I, I can't really say anything else without spoiling, but... Just expect that. Um, let's see here. Number three, what happened to Takuya Kanabar? He hasn't been seen since High Voltage, and that was four months ago. Well, again, like I stated before, you know, the Royale Rumble was the road to Animania, so there's going to be certain people that aren't going to be really shown prominently as they could when it's not the road to Animania. So, you know, Takuya Kanabar, he's still obviously one of those young guys that are going to go up there maybe eventually, but... You know, there was no plans for him in this Rotana Mania, so he kind of just got lost in the shuffle, unfortunately. That's just kind of what that's just kind of what happens. Not everybody can be on Animania, you know. It's just what it is. Um, number four, how did you how did your voice manage to remain mostly stable for five hours? Um, this year I basically just um I didn't do what I didn't do one take. I didn't just like sit down for five hours and just do one take of um, commentating. It just it took me a couple of hours, even a couple of days, to do separate recordings. But even then, my voice was still being shot because, you know, the excitement. I gotta be excited. I gotta be hyped. It is Animania 3. But, um, that's kind of how it was. Um, again, for all commentators, it should be kind of routine at this point. Always bring a big cup of water. Always bring a, um, a big glass of water for commentating so your voice doesn't get rugged and hoarse at the end of the program. But... Yeah, that's kind of how I just was stable for the most part. But again, it's an Animania staple. I always lose my voice. It just happens. It's just the way it is. Um, what kind of girls do you hope to recruit for the Gram Glamrex division? That is a good question. Now, anyone that knows me with Anime Championship Wrestling, as much as I always put out you know, the more known characters of anime and video games and what have you, I also like promoting those that maybe a lot of the majority do not know. You know, so I'm gonna be um, implementing people. I'm gonna be implementing, you know, people with different styles, people that are different. Now, I'm not saying that every girl that I bring in is gonna be their own unique way, but I'm just gonna say that I want to bring in talents that really would mesh well with the Glamrux division. You know, it's like it's kind of like the whole um, slogan that the X division with TNA had one time. It wasn't weight limits; it was no limits. Well, with, with, with the Glamorex division, it's it's not just one style. It's all styles. That's my slogan for the Glamorex division. So I'm going to be bringing in the best that, you know, anime, video games, and call has to offer for the Glamorex division. So, and yes, there will be more recruited girls that will compete in the division next year. I can guarantee that at least. Um... Let's see, six. Where did the likes of Haru Glory, Gohan, and Moroku go from here now that ACW is experiencing a changing of the guard? That's a very good question, and I'm glad. That is one of the most main talking points that has come out of Animania 3, that Animania 3 wasn't a new era, per se, but it was a changing shift of the guard. Um, as everyone knows, the pillars of Anime Championship Wrestling, at least to me, back when we started, were the likes of Gara, Aang, um, Moroku, Haru, Nightwing, Gohan, you know, the stuff, people like that, that were, have, that, that have been mainstays, well, now you've got new talent, like, you've got Dark Magician, you've got Eren Yeager, you've got Ino Yamanaka, you've got Aang becoming an Excel champion, you've got Sasuke building his own future, you've got a lot of things going on right now, you've got Trunks still Impulse champion, you know, it's a great time to see 
there's a shift in the ACW landscape. Now, where will that lead next year? We don't know. But there's a definite shift, and I'm glad a lot of you fans realize that because that was one of the underlying points of Animania 3, that there was going to be a shift in the guard. So I'm glad people realize that. All right, Joshua Howell asked me a couple of questions as well. Let's see. What are your thoughts on the recent episodes of TWA Battlefront 6970? I'm really liking it. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to End of Days. I'm looking forward to uh, Kruger and um, um, Voorhees. Looking forward to the Stalker and Invisible Man. It, although it's weird. I don't know. Is Invisible, is Invisible Man healed because he's feuding with the Stalker? Or is he still faced because there's still him and the um, Universal Monsters are still feuding with the Slashers? I'm not sure. I don't. That's kind of confusing. Um, I am also looking forward to Fox McCloud and Andros. Um... We'll see how Fox McCloud is able to revenge those that were killed by Andros. I like that storyline. It's a great storyline. A lot of emotion going into that story, so I'm really expecting a lot to go down. Um, it's going to be really interesting. But um, going to look forward to see RJ and Mark, the announcers, wrestle and fight Uncle Pennybags and his team. So that will be pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's a lot of interesting stuff going on in TWA. I'm going to be looking forward to it during the offseason. Um, the awesome TWA, TWA Super Series. Um, good show. Um, the stalker coming back was a pretty good surprise. It answered that whole mystery of why the snow was just coming out of nowhere. Um, some of the matches were kind of short. Some of them were the good amount of time. Um, overall, it was a pretty damn good show. Uh, in my opinion. Um, let's see. You seem to agree with me that when I refer to Anita, who he's talking about um, Anita Sarkeesian, as a sex hustler. I guess that means her and Al Sharpton have a lot in common, right? Yeah, they kind of do. You know, for those that don't know who... Let me explain this briefly. For those that don't know who Anita Sarkeesian is, um, she's the uh, creator of the uh, Feminist Frequency account on YouTube here. And one of her favorite or one of her most notable things is her videos that deal with tropes versus women in video games. And it's some of the most disingenuous, dishonest, uninformed piece of drivel that I've ever heard from a critic of video games. Clearly to me, she's not a fan of video games. Clearly to me, she's not a... And I don't want to be one of those guys that say that, oh, you don't do this, you don't do this, you don't do this, you're not a gamer. Because that shouldn't be really what it's about. But for her... She's using video games as a vehicle to push her third wave feminism to those that do not accept that notion. And honestly, she's a lot worse than Adam Sessler. At least Adam Sessler, he's just a follower. He's just a puppet. He's just told what to say. He's just told to what to say. But with Anita, she's more cunning. She's more maniacal. She's more um, manipulative. So um, again, if you really want me, if you really want to know the just disgust I have for this woman and the way she represents things. Go type in Feminist Frequency, Video Games versus Tropes. Ugh. And you'll you'll understand why I brought her in at Animania 3 and did what I did. Okay? And, um, let's see. Do you think people have the right to attack Ray Rice for hitting his wife when they are the people who gave a similar influence to, on kids like police officers who commit similar crimes daily? Um, my whole opinion with that whole saga is that what Ray Rice did was clearly wrong. There's no, de there's no defending Ray Rice really in this situation. He did what he did; and it was wrong. But let's not think like he's the only culprit in the situation. Okay, his fiance was just as guilty as well. Because looking by the videos that I saw, the full length videos, she was hitting him first. You know, that's the thing. That's the whole double standard here. You know, women want to always talk about equality, that we should all be equal and everything like that. But then they will go right ahead and use, they will go right ahead and use their gender as a shield to avoid harsher, um, you know, crimes or criticism that a man, that a man gets. Not all women, but most of them, let's be honest. So, Ray Rice was wrong for hitting her because... You're a professional athlete. You have to carry yourself when you're representing the NFL. And you did it. So you deserve the punishment that you got. So Ray Rice, he goofed. He deserved what he got. But his fiance deserves just as much uh, criticism and uh, 
you know, legit questions towards her as well for attacking Ray Rice, knowing that she was going to elicit a response from him. You know, people want to say, well, Ray Rice should have been a gentleman. Well, how about her fiance? What? How about his fiance be a lady then? You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of double standards with this whole Ray Rice situation that I'm seeing from a lot of women that I call that women that are my friends that I've known for a, quite a while. And there's a lot of just a lot of bias and a lot of uh, hypocrisy coming out of some people from this situation. But that's my opinion. I'm a humanist. I believe in equality for all. I'm not a feminist, because so that's a different thing. That's not a, that's not a humanist. That's not an egal, egalitarian. Um, but I call it as I see it. My mom, well, my mom and my dad taught me, if you're going to hit somebody, expect to be hit back. Period. Sorry. And I don't hit women, okay? Don't get me wrong. I know, I know people are going to say, well, then, then you must hit women. I don't hit women. I don't hit women, because I got super, like, my, my strength, I, like, I will really hurt somebody with if I fight somebody. I don't fight anymore. It doesn't mean I still can't fight, but I really don't fight anymore because, you know, it's just childish at this point. But, um, yeah, I just, I don't hit women, but there are some women out there that are asking to be hit and ultimately deserve it, really. And um, Quincy Brown, uh, what's next for ACW after 2014? Kind of answered that question already. Um, we'll just have to wait um, next year. I can't really spoil anything for you guys because that will just ruin the whole mystique. But um, don't worry, I, I got you guys, don't worry. There's going to be a lot of things for ACW heading into 2015. You just guys have to be patient about it. And um, when we get there, we will get there. Um, so expect, expect, expect big things in 2015. All right, let me see if I got any more questions here. Let's see. Hugo Goncalves asked, what are your... What are what are for you the best and worst moments in this season of ACW? Hmm. Are you talking about K Fabe wise within the anime championship wrestling world? Or just me um putting together anime championship wrestling this year? Ah, screw it. I'll just go shoot. I'll, go, I'll just go the way of the shoot. Best moments was um, well, at least now one of them was putting together Animania three. Um, let's see what else was. Let's see, putting together Animania three, doing the Royale Rumble. Um, and also doing the shows two months in advance. So. If you watch the Excel episode in July, I'm already doing an Excel episode um, by late September. That was pretty cool too. The worst moments, though, I gotta be honest with you, not the not the show itself because the show itself was pretty damn good. It was a pretty it was a great show, but um, doing Anime Revolution because I just got done with the Royale Rumble. Obviously, the Royale Rumble was a good event. Everybody knows that the next important event was going to be Animania 3 after the, Ro the Royale Rumble. And so Anime Revolution was just a buff between those two. So it's like, so with me, it's like, oh man, I got to do Anime Revolution before I even get to Animania 3. Because I really want to do Animania 3, but I got to do Anime, Re Anime Revolution. Ugh. So I kind of procrastinated with Animania uh, Revolution for a while. Because it's like, oh my goodness. like. But eventually I got it done. It was a good show. Just That was just, that was just one of those moments where I just didn't want to do that show. Because I wanted to get to Animania 3. Um, one of my worst moments, obviously, was um, that whole like, ordeal with my external hard drive when I was getting ready to post Animania on Friday. The morning of of that Friday, my external hard drive just crapped out on me where I had my uh, final edition of the Apocalypse event. So I had to postpone ACW for two weeks, push everything back two weeks. Eventually, I had a rough draft of Apocalypse on my computer, so I was able to just do new commentary over it, which was good, but that was just, I just didn't like that moment, because I, because I was just getting, I got frustrated, I'm like, I just came back this year, I'm not going to take another damn hiatus, no way, I'm not going to do that again, screw that, so, so there you go, let's see, number two, what was your favorite ACW Mega event during this all season? Obviously, Animania 3, in my opinion. Number three, which one of the ACW's newest talents did the best progress so far? 
new talents. Are if you're ta are you talking about people that made their debuts this year? If you're talking about that, I mean, Dark Magician has to be up in the running. He has to be up there. And if you really want to go that far, and if you want to also talk about it, I know it's way too early to say this, but, I mean, let's be honest, Aaron Yeager, because he debuted, made a surprising debut, he kept up with Joe Gashi, and he won the Cruiserweight title in his first ever ACW match. That's his pretty quick progress, in my opinion. So, yeah, those two up there would be my choices. Um... What are your thoughts about Animania 3? I kind of just went over that, but Animania 3, in my opinion, was my favorite Animania of ever doing. I think the greatest mega event for ACW period in its company history, and I had fun doing it. So, um, let's see, Adrian Gonzalez asks me what big changes are going to happen to ACW. I don't know how you want to find big, but there'll be some big changes, I guess. Again, I can't spoil anything. I can't really spoil a lot, but. Yeah, there'll be some big changes for Animania, and I mean, no, yeah, well, that'll be next year for Animania 4, but um, ACW-wise, yeah, there'll be some changes. you just have to wait next year. Um, Stefan Sherrod asked me, can we see ACW moving to WWE 2K14 or 15? No on 2K15, because that's a pile of crap. I don't care. I don't care what anyone wants to say. They can defend it all they want. They can try to make excuses for it. WWE 2K15 is an unmitigated disaster for a call owner. And no one that owns a call league or tries to start a call league should be using WWE 2K15. It is that bad. And I'm not going to go there. That's why I'm... But as for a WWE 2K14, maybe, maybe, maybe. It's either going to be staying on WWE 13 or going to move to w uh, 2K14. I'll just let you know right now. But I don't know. We'll find out when we get there. Um... So there you go. Those are the questions and comments for the newscast. Thank you very much for everyone that sent me those questions and comments. Um, I do appreciate it. Thank you guys for also tuning into the newscast throughout this entire year. I appreciate it. It's been a uh, wild ride giving you guys my thoughts and views about your questions and comments and just thoughts about topics that I am interested in and just topics that I wanted to talk about. So thank you guys for tuning into the newscast. Now, now we get into the whole... Well, what's next for ACW next year? What is ACW, ACW going to be doing? Well, right now ACW is on its off season, obviously, but that doesn't mean we're going to be not doing anything for you guys leading up to the return for ACW next year. Um, so let's get it down right now. As everyone knows already, as uh, Maddie dangerously kind of announced uh, a week ago, about a week ago, anyways. Um. It's going to be a ACW UCCW crossover show. We've been trying to do this crossover show for quite a while and it's either him or I we never were able to have free time to do it, but now we can be able to do it and have free time. So look out for the uh ACW UCCW Super Show um sometime in spring of 2015. Um we'll give you guys more information on that as the date draws closer. So look out for that. Um also, I wanted to address this right now. After this newscast, we will be announcing the categories and nominees for the 2014 ACW Year-End Awards. That's right, we're bringing back the Year-End Awards for ACW this year. I had to wait till Animania 3 was finished, but we are bringing them back. So be on the lookout later today or even tomorrow for the categories and nominees for, um, you know, um, the ACW Year End Awards, and yes, you will be able to vote on them on the ACW website, so, you know, if you're going to post your results on Facebook and Twitter, they're not going to count, the only way your vote matters is when you go to the ACW website and vote for those categories over there, and we will announce those winners, we will actually announce those winners during the ACW Draft, so, make sure you guys stick tuned to that. Speaking of the ACW Draft, yes, we are bringing back the ACW Draft next year, 2015, we will have the ACW draft in February of 2015. That's when we're going to bring back the draft. Five people from Excel will be drafted Pulse. Five people from Impulse will be drafted to Excel. Who? You're going to have to find out. And yes, I have locked in the ones that I'm going to be trading. You'll just have to find out who they are. What else? Also, trying to do this as well. The 2015 Elite Tournament. 
will be also coming back. So we will be doing elite tournament matches um, the the final two weeks before we return to ACW officially with Excel and Impulse. So we will be bringing back the, the uh, elite tournament. The Impulse brand will be hosting the elite tournament uh, this year since you know last year's uh, next year since this year Excel hosted theirs. So the Impulse brand will be hosting the 2015 Elite Tournament. As you all know, uh, Sagat won the Elite Tournament in 2011 when Impulse held theirs that year. So we're going to find out who will be the next King of Elite, if you will. So there's a lot of big things happening. A lot of big things happening. 2015 Elite Tournament, the ACW Draft, the ACW UCCW Super Show, um, the ACW Year End Awards. We're going to be doing a lot of st stuff for you guys with ACW still during our off season. So, my gift to you, people, because I love you guys. Not really, but I still do. Okay? All right. Um, so, there you have it. That's all I got at this point. So, um, I just want to say to you guys, from the bottom of my heart, um, let me just be serious. Honestly, I'm no sarcasm here. I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you guys for watching Anime Championship Wrestling this year and for all these, you know, starting as a kid in 2006 who had a Day of Reckoning 2 game for the GameCube and had a crappy computer and a crappy camera and stacked all the uh, video game files on top so the camera can get the TV right to record it. From going from there to what it is now, it means a lot to me that I still have fans to this day from that era even that still watch ACW. And it's almost overwhelming to see how ACW has grown from that to right now. I never thought I'd be doing ACW still in 2014, I'll be honest with you. Um, when I started ACW, I thought it was just going to be a thing because when I saw No DQ Call, I wanted to do something like that but with anime characters and... Um, I thought I just was doing it for the bandwagon hype, but the more I kept doing it, the more I got engaged and the more I got emotionally invested into my league, and now it has become what it is today. And I want to thank each and every single one of you for staying with us, for watching us for all these years, for spreading the word, for making me feel like I've contributed to something that, you know, a lot of people... Can relate to. I want to. I want to thank the new fans this year, who uh, subscribed, followed me on Twitter or Facebook, um, who subscribed on the YouTube channel. I want to thank you, new fans, for giving us a chance and for watching our product because we really are one of the best colleagues out there. And for some people, they think we're the best colleague out there. I'm. That's not for me to say, but you know, I think we're obviously one of the best out there. And um, I want to thank you guys for watching us. For the old school fans, thank you guys also for sticking with us. Thank you guys for spreading the word. Thank you guys for just being a part of the ACW um, fan base. I do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I've said this once, and I will continue to say it until ACW is no more. Without you guys, there would be no ACW. Without you fans, there would be no ACW, period. Without you guys, I wouldn't be doing this anymore. And hopefully, as much as I made my return here this year with ACW, we can keep that momentum going for next year. We Let's make it bigger. Let's do more big things so I can give you moments like this and give you more um, entertaining programs like these. And I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. You know, This is Hakeem Johnson, the person talking right now, not Hakeem Johnson, the call owner, not Hakeem Johnson, the announcer. This is Hakeem Johnson, the person. Thank you. I appreciate it. I got love for each and every single one of you guys. And hopefully I'll see you guys next year. It's been a fun ride this year. And hopefully we can do it again next year. So, thank you for watching and listening to the final ACW newscast of this year. And as always, stay cool. Stay cool. I'll see you all next year.